Hoo-ha, ladies and gentlemen. That's so kind of you to join us. In today's show, Professor Polenta, our very splendid inventor, will be giving a deserving member of our conspiracy a very special shout-out. We're promised an amazing new trick from Norman, my daredevil pet fly, and of course, sir, hoo-ha him, via our satellite snack type thing. Oh, and please do subscribe by clicking the little hat on the screen. First, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll hand you over to Professor Polenta, our splendid inventor. Professor. Ah, no, hello. Um, Professor Polenta here. Excuse my somewhat dishevelled appearance. I've been trying to invent a steam-powered escalator fruit-based thing. I haven't managed it yet. Can't seem to get my head round it at all. Can't find my screwdriver. Anyway, never mind. Onwards and upwards, and on to today's Shout Out. It's for three members of our conspiracy. Here they are. Jim, Carol, and Troy. Now, where did I leave that screwdriver? Hmm. Hmm. Round here somewhere. Let's go and look over here. I mustn't trip over these. They look like the... Oh! <coughs> Thank you, Professor. Now, Gerald Montague Smith was a slight and sickly man who was blessed with a very special and unique gift. He was a boxer by profession, but not at all your usual sort, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it could never have been said of Montague Smith that he was sporty at all, no. The kind of boxing Gerald cared to engage in was the putting things into variety. He was something of an expert, and legend had it that there was simply nothing he could not fit in a box. A fine cheese? A herbal poultice? <laughs> they were no problem for Gerald. His services were thought after the length and breadth of these hallowed British Isles, which is how one day he came to the attention of Jack Gradlintle, the infamous practical joker from Luxworth. <laughs> I hear you're a boxer, said Gradlintle, on being shown into the small bed-sitting room Gerald inhabited. I am, sir, replied Gerald Montague Smith, whilst finishing up the perfect boxing of an orange segment. Is there something I may box for you? There may be that. <laughs> that there may be, slathered Gradlintle, teeth noticeably missing. That may be there, <laughs> he went on, stroking the spiky, whiskered terrain of his grim-faced chin. The devilment of the practical joker rising in him, it made him hop across the room with glee. Coming to a stop in the centre of the little room, he found himself next to a large wooden box containing an old church bell. From behind his back produced Jack a coal-black sack. "'What is it you'd like me to box for you?' Gerald asked. "'I've boxed almost everything, but always seek new challenges.' Now, I should point out that Gerald Montague Smith, though a genius at boxing, had on rare occasion been known to faint when presented with particularly troublesome boxings, a condition brought on when he was a young and ambitious boxer, and was suddenly confronted with how he might box a five-sided brass tea strainer. Well, subsequently, whenever presented by such an impenetrable conundrum of physics, he'd be so overcome he would fall to the floor in an instant. And although it is true at this moment in his career nothing had so baffled him for years, what Gradlintle was to reply was shortly to have the same devastating effect. <laughs> I would like you to, Gradlintle began, reeling in his prey. Yes, Gerald asked eagerly. I would like you to, to box, <laughs> Gradlintle teased. Yes, please tell me, a, a fish, a, a slice of lemon drizzle cake, three whole red onions. Gradlintle sniggered behind his hand, barely able to prevent himself from bursting into villainous laughter. I would like you to box this. And with that, Jack opened the sack, from out of which trotted a little white dog, a boxer, no less sporting little boxing gloves on his paws and wearing a pair of the brightest striped silk black and white boxer shorts Gerald had ever seen. Gerald Montague Smith let out a small whimper of bafflement and fainted immediately. Gradlintel, meanwhile, laughed so hard and with such force that he lost his balance, tripping over the dog who yelped and bit him on the leg. It was then that Jack Gradlintel staggered and fell face forward into the large box knocking himself out on the old church belt contained on his way. Ding, ding. 
After which the lid closed firmly on top, proving once again, ladies and gentlemen, that even when out cold himself, Gerald was still a knockout at boxing. And now, may we present Hair Shirt Girl from Telling Tales. Are you ready, Mr. The Legs? Are you ready, Mr. Antonio? Then, let us play. You burn my things to have your fun And I don't care at all You laugh at me behind my back But I miss you when you're gone My hair should go Finally, ladies and gentlemen, Norman, my pet fly, has promised to raise our spirits by performing his death-defying loop-the-loop through circles of fire routine. Norman, over to you. How disappointing. Please join us for our next meeting of the hoo-ha. Stay safe, stay well, and please subscribe by clicking the little hat below. Hoo-ha. Mm -hmm.